Fishing disputes have stoked tensions between littoral states in the region. It has also posed a serious challenge to maritime security in the South China Sea. Fishermen are facing a continuous struggle to defend their rights to fish in one of the most contested regions in the world. Ayaw po namin na maano yung buhay namin, malagay sa alanganin po. Wala namang makakasaklulo sa'yo dyan na dahil natatakot din yung ibang uh, mga mahing isda pagka pinalubog ka na ng Chinese dyan. As countries begin to stake territorial claims in the disputed region, competition of resources can only get bigger and more intense. In the eyes of Chinese policymakers and Chinese fishermen, their activities, as well as is within the right dash line, as well as the bias Chinese domestic law, should be considered illegal. In the contests for resources and influence in the strategic waterway, does China's might is right strategy work best for the region? Where does that leave the fishermen whose livelihood has taken a huge blow? as a result of the aggressive and unregulated fishing activities in the region. This is the South China Sea. It's the lifeblood of the coastal communities living in the Southeast Asian region. Their livelihood is tied very closely to the strategic waterway and all the riches that lie beneath it. Here is also where 47-year-old Bobong Lamuado earns a living as a fisherman. He's among more than a million people from the Philippines who are involved in marine fishing. Around three quarters of them are small-scale fishermen. Bobong has been fishing here in the Western Philippine Sea for more than 25 years now. But he and his 22-year-old son, Joshua, would only fish within two nautical miles from the mainland. They are after marine species such as octopus and snapper. And if they're lucky, tuna as well, to help supplement their daily income. For a kilogram of fish and four and a half kilograms of octopus, they're able to sell them to a middleman for just over eight US dollars. It's barely enough to feed all seven people in the family. His favorite fishing spot is an area around the Scarborough Shores, because that's where he could find a wide variety of high quality fish. Scarborough Shoal lies approximately 120 nautical miles from the Philippines coast. It's well within the 200 nautical miles of the Philippines' Exclusive Economic Zone, or EEZ. The EEZ is where the country has exclusive rights over all the resources found in this area under international law. Kasi po, mas madali po manghuli ng isda doon. Yung po ang ano namin, gusto namin marating yan na lugar na yan. Bumabahagi po kami ng, sa, sa loob ng 15 days po, bumabahagi po kami ng 15 to 18,000 uh, tuwing uwi po ng ano namin. 
kung kasi ang uwian ng bangka namin dito pinakamatagal noon ano lang isang linggo loaded na po yung ano namin bangka namin kaya kami doon steady lang kami uh, na maghanap buhay but that was many years ago today he does not feel safe venturing that far out into the sea he would remain just two nautical miles from land instead, even though better fishing grounds lie further away in the open sea. The presence of a fleet of Chinese fishing vessels is enough to scare him off. These vessels come in huge numbers to harvest fish resources in the area, backed by Chinese naval coast guards. According to Bobong, they've often muscled their way into the Philippines' EEZ and chased out Filipino fishermen from the areas they regard as their territorial waters. Simula nung may Chinese na na nagbabantay doon sa Bukana ng Scarborough, hindi na po kami makakapasok. Pinagbabawalan po nila kami. Kasi wala na... Wala din pong Navy, walang Coast Guard, na Philippine Coast Guard, walang Philippine Navy. Kung hindi po, Chinese na lang po yung nakikita namin noon. Sa sarili po naming bansa, hindi po kami malaya na mangisda po sa sarili naming ano, uh, isla na pinagkukunan po namin ng pangkabuhayan na mabuhay po sa ng pamilya namin. Ang bangka po namin nasa ano na lang po nasa payaw. O, pag gusto namin mangisda, parang sarili namin bansa parang ninanakaw namin yung hinuhuli namin kasi nga may mga Chinese na nagbabantay dalawang speedboat bababa yun yung pupunta sa'yo para paalising ka may hawak sila na plug na maliit yun ang mag ano sa'yo itataboy ka nila sabihin nila sa'yo you go back uh, Philippines go Philippines o pa paalising ka nila tapos Pag tinanong, ko naman, pag tinanong ko naman sila, this is Philippine territory, this is, this is uh, Panatagsyol, sabi kong ganun. Ay, sabi ko, this is Escarborosyol, na sa Pilipinas po ito, sabi kong ganun. Sabi nung Inchik, no, 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 this is uh, Chinese territory, sabi nila, you go, go, you go back Philippine. In the competition for ocean's bounty, Bobong and other Filipino fishermen stood no chance against the large, intimidating fishing vessels, as well as the armed Chinese naval coast guards. When the large boats came charging at his boat, he'd have no choice but to retreat and leave the area. Nakakatakot naman talaga dahil ang mga Pilipino, una, sa sasakyan pa lang sa dagat, sa laot, Maliliit na yung ating uh, ginagamit na sasakyan, bangka. Kung ikukumpara doon sa mga barko, para lang tayong langaw na nakadikit doon sa parang langaw lang. Hindi ka man ito barilin, hindi ka man ito bumbahin ng tubig. Pag binangga ka nito, siguradong malulubog at wala namang makakasaklulo sa iyo dyan na dahil natatakot din yung ibang Ah, mga maing isda pagka pinalubog ka na ng Chinese din. Bobong has lodged a report to the authorities, hoping they would come to his assistance or other fishermen like himself. But until today, no action has been taken by the authorities against the Chinese fishing vessels. Pag, pag nagre-report po kami sa kanila, yun lang ang sinasabi nila sa amin, umiwas na lang po. Kasi po, Hindi po talaga nila kaya ang China sa panahon na yun. Kasi po kulang po din talaga. At saka nakikita ko po ang mga barko po ng Philippine Coast Guard noon, ang liliit po. Samantala po sa kanila ang lalaki. Nakakatakot po talaga. Overlapping claims to the EEZ in the South China Sea are seen to be at the heart of the current dispute between several countries in the region. Beijing has claimed it has historical rights over the region, based on the so-called Nine-Dash Line, which first appeared on its map in 1947. 
It's a U-shaped zone that stretches some 1,200 miles south of the Chinese mainland. And it encompasses as much as 90% of the contested waters, including the Scarborough Shoal, which is now under complete Chinese control. We have to understand one thing is that China regards the, the South China Sea issue as a core national interest, right? Alongside with so-called the Tibet and the Taiwan issue, right? So to the Chinese, right, there's no way they were going to give up uh, the so-called the, the, the South China Sea uh, territory. Uh, use the President Xi's war, right? China will not give up uh, an inch of territory left behind by the ancestor. So that's China's pretty strong, right? The message you're sending to the world. The Philippines, however, argues that the shore remains within 200 nautical miles of its exclusive economic zone, giving it the right to exploit the natural resources in the area. But that has not altered China's position. Beijing even rejected the 2016 decision by the UN Permanent Court of Arbitration, which ruled against China's sovereignty over the South China Sea. It even lays claims to all the disputed Paracel and the Spratly Islands and various other features which fall within the Nine Dash Line. Over the years, China has used its engineering might to transform the shallow reefs in the South China Sea into artificial islands. The islands have now been turned into fortified military bases with runways and harbors equipped with surface-to-air missiles. What I see is that both the continuity and the change in China's foreign policy. Because now, because China, one of sending the message is very clear. China is strong and powerful. We're going to defend, safeguard China's national interest and China's territorial integrity, including the South China Sea, no matter what it will cost. Right? So I think that's the message China wants to send. No one had ever seen that kind of uh, activity of a state asserting its claims to the oceans by actually building an artificial island. These are the largest artificial islands the world has ever seen. China was basically taking advantage of the loopholes or the gaps in the law in that area by building on what we now call high tide elevations, uh, rocks and reefs that could potentially create uh, territorial seas and therefore are subject to sovereignty disputes. No? And since it is disputed, no, um, um, the Philippines could not take forceful measures like uh, war. And today, backed by the so-called Nine Dash Line, Chinese fishing vessels are now empowered to harvest the sea at will. They even throw their weight around chasing the Filipino fishermen out of what they claim as their territorial waters. At least uh, in the eyes of Chinese policymakers and Chinese fishermen, their activities as well as is within the Nine Dash Line, as well as uh, obvious uh, Chinese domestic law, uh, should be considered legal. But of course, this is disputed by the other uh, South China Sea. As China continues to solidify its presence in the South China Sea, the move has come at a great expense to Filipino fishermen. Many have found themselves struggling to bring home enough fish to feed their families, and that has affected their livelihood. But the Philippines is not the only country that has come under intense pressure from China's fishing activities in the South China Sea. For centuries, the South China Sea has been a vital part of the Maritime Silk Road. Almost a third of the international maritime trade passes through the South China Sea every year, and that includes commercial fishing. Over half of the world's fishing vessels are found here, supplying around 12% of the global fish catch. 33-year-old fisherman Chen Hong Tok has been fishing around the Paracel Islands for almost 20 years. 
The area is home to an abundance of shrimp, fish, crabs and snails. It's not surprising then that the region is Tot's favourite fishing spot. That's also where the bulk of his earnings comes from. But the archipelago has become a source of heightened tensions between China and Vietnam, renowned for its rich fishing ground. It's also believed to contain vast energy reserves. That's the reason why both countries are claiming sovereignty over the islands, known in China as Si Sha and Hong Sha in Vietnam. Tok knows he's facing a huge risk each time he goes out to sea to earn a decent income to feed his family amidst all these competing claims. Để mà thực hiện bằng được cái tham vọng của họ như là Trung Quốc họ muốn hợp thức hóa cái đường yếu sức lưỡi bò đó thì họ thường xuyên đưa cái lực lượng tàu hải cảnh rồi tàu bán vũ trang ra ô ạt tiến xuống rồi ngăn cản bao vây thậm chí là họ tiến hành bắt bớ đòi tiền chuộc bắn cháy tàu A seasoned fisherman Tok is well aware of the perils of being out at sea. But nothing could have prepared him for what happened one night when he was out on his usual fishing trip. Nói chung thì em cũng làm biển ở ngoài vùng sâu mua mấy năm rồi. Nói chung thì em cũng gặp miết, gặp miết mà cái đêm hôm hôm vừa đầu này thì em cũng kiếp nhất là em sợ nhất là đêm đó là là em sợ nhất là là nó À, tính mòn của tố anh em trong trong tàu nó thương tư vừa đầu tàu em cũng ra quần đổ uh, đổ quần xoa em đánh bét đổ quần quần xoa rồi em gặp tàu trung quốc uh, trung quốc là nhớ là số tàu là là bóng ba không một của tàu trung quốc với em nếm đó là y là hơi tiếng hồ là nếm đó là Nói chung là anh em ở trong tàu là nấp bách, chả miết, chả roa, chả roa hướng kim tiếng mơ, chả roa. Nó thỏa tao 5 phút, 5, 10 phút, thưởng là nó thỏa đầu, mà là, là nó không thỏa, nó quà là xong vô là ngay, có, có rộp có là, có là, 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 là biết là tàu nó xong. Đó là, là nó xong rồi vừa xong, nó vừa xong là tao em nó bể là nước là nó vô xô xô ấy xong vô là nghe nước vô liền cỡ 10 phút 15 phút sau vậy cái tàu em nó chìm tàu em nó chìm có anh em cái tàu em nó chìm có nó còn láo chiếc mũi là láo có mũi và một trong những quyền chủ quyền quan trọng nhất là quốc gia bên biển có quyền chủ quyền đối với việc khai thác bảo vệ các cái nguồn tài nguyên sinh vật và không sinh vật và như vậy là người ngư dân của quốc quốc gia bên biển đã có quyền tiến hành đánh bắt hải sản, khai thác đánh cá để vì phục vụ cho cái đời sống của mình. While Tok is grateful to have come out of the incident unscathed, his fishing boat was destroyed by the Chinese coast guard along with his only source of income. He now struggles to make ends meet. Em là người dân đi làm biển hàng năm tôi đi biển là sáu bảy tháng là thu nhập là sáu ba chục triệu có hầu cứ tàu của em bị chìm là em mắc hết là nợ nần nhà nước mưa mà, mà người bà con ở trong xóm này là nợ hết tỷ mấy bữa mùa này thì em ở nhà thì phụ do bữa gia đình làm bánh bữa ông giò bà giò nó có tiền chi phí trong gia đình 
TikTok's harrowing encounter marks the second time in less than a year a Vietnamese fishing vessel has been sunk by a Chinese vessel near the Paracel Islands. News of the incident had shaken the fishing community in Vietnam, and the effect is still being felt today. Nói chung là mình cũng nếu như các thuyền lớn đấy cũng là một người con em đi theo biển giống như bạn em thế này nên là mình cũng rất gì là không hài lòng với những cái con tàu của nước bạn là uh, xâm chiếm biển Việt Nam mình nên là cũng uh, mà nói là xâm chiếm với biển uh, thuyền Việt Nam mình thì là Việt Nam mình bất lợi không chỉ cần bán là anh em mà nghe được cái tin của tiền Việt Nam đánh khơi đánh xa buôn bám đảo mà bà lâm chiếm của nước ngoài mà đâm mến phá mình nghe tin thì tất nhiên là rất buồn và rất sốt cho anh em bám biển và cơ bản là phụ thuộc theo thời tiết à phụ thuộc theo về mà mùa tháng vì cơ bản là mùa hè là ta đánh tôm ghẹ trái mà mùa đông the rise of china china has become the so called the second largest economy and also the largest economy in asia right so the the the, the point is that china now have the more uh, capacity and ability to defend to safeguard so called the, the the national interest and also the china's economic interest included right so territorial interest maritime interest and the economic interest so you you see that the uh, china is becomes uh, perceived to be more assertive right uh, the sinking of the red fishing fishing ball uh, the uh, the land reclamation and also you know installing so called military facilities in the south china sea right so among others issue right giữa cái việc mà anh cho phép hải cảnh được sử dụng vũ lực khi mà xâm phạm vào vùng biển được gọi là chủ quyền của Trung Quốc Nhưng cái gọi là vùng biển Trung Quốc chủ quyền ở đâu thì không được làm rõ Tức là bác bỏ, tòa trọng tài đã bác bỏ cái quyền lịch sử và cái quyền pháp lý của cái đường lưỡi bò với tư cách là một vùng biển chủ quyền của Trung Quốc Cái đó là vô lý khi mà giải thích theo công ước luật biển của Liên Hợp Quốc Mà anh phải tôn trọng cái trật tự trên biển phù hợp với lại luật pháp quốc tế trong đó cũng được biển Liên Quốc. In response to the ongoing threats from China, Vietnam's National Assembly passed a series of resolutions under its laws on civil defense forces in 2009 and 2019. The law, among others, allows for the formation of Vietnam's maritime militia units. Scores of local fishermen and private fishing enterprises were conscripted into the militia force. It's estimated that around 8,000 fishing boats and 46,000 fishermen are now part of Vietnam's maritime militia. Có thể nói người Việt Nam chúng ta có thể nói là nếu như mà vi phạm đến các cái quyền, cái toàn vẹn lãnh thổ, chủ quyền thiên liêng cũng như các quyền hợp pháp, thì người Việt Nam đã sẵn sàng dùng tất cả máu xương của mình để mà bảo vệ cho đến cùng đấy là cái, cái bản chất cái truyền thống người Việt Nam rồi và vì vậy rõ ràng là trước mọi cái 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 âm mưu mọi cái sự hành động vi phạm đến các quyền lợi ích hợp pháp của Việt Nam sẵn sàng. With the rising tension in the South China Sea, uh, both countries has taken effort to strengthen uh, their maritime militia forces in the context of China. If you look at the official documents, right? The maritime militia can be considered a reserve force for the People's Liberation Army Navy. China's maritime militia are mostly organized by the country's large fishing companies. And Vietnam is often no match against China's massive fleets and technological superiority. In May 2014, Vietnam and China's fishing militia and their coast guards were embroiled in one of the worst standoffs between the two nations. That was when a Chinese state-owned oil rig, Haiyang Shiyou 981, and three oil and gas service ships entered Vietnam-claimed territorial waters. The Vietnamese coast guard was swiftly dispatched to the scene, and the situation quickly escalated. Water cannons were fired and violent collisions ensued. Although cool heads finally prevailed, the situation remains tense. In January 2021, China stoked tensions in the South China Sea by passing new legislation 
granting its Coast Guard the power to fire weapons on foreign vessels and demolish structures built in waters claimed by Beijing. China maintains that the law is needed to safeguard its sovereignty, security and maritime rights. In defiance of China's efforts to dominate the region, Vietnam stepped up its defenses by expanding its maritime militia and installing new anti-aircraft and coastal defense systems in its naval outposts. Vì vậy mà một trong những cái điều tôi suy nghĩ là các nước phải có cái kiềm chế và phải tiếp tục minh bạch hóa cái phạm vi áp dụng những cái chính sách luật pháp ấy. Thế tuy nhiên thì nước nào thế thôi, chúng ta cũng sẵn sàng có thể phải sử dụng đến những tình huống xấu nhất để mà tự vệ phù hợp với lại hiến trương Liên Hợp Quốc của Việt Nam là một thành viên. Despite the heightened tensions in the South China Sea, local fishermen continue to operate in these perilous waters, driven by the need to fish in order to put food on the table. Dạ, nói chung thì em cũng ra đánh bét rồi em cũng mua sinh uh, nuôi, nuôi đánh bét em mua sinh nuôi nuôi vợ nuôi con mà rồi nó giống nói chung là mình lùm vùng đổ đó, mười mấy năm trời rồi là nó quen rồi nó gặp trường trường hợp nó nhiều quá rồi nó quen rồi là em không sợ nữa. Countries around the South China Sea have wrangled over territory for decades. But tension has steadily increased in recent years as China grows increasingly aggressive in asserting its claims to most of the South China Sea. In the light of growing international criticisms and worsening relations with countries in the region, how far will China go to assert its territorial claims? And to what end? China's appetite for seafood is still growing. The country's increasing wealth means that the eating habits of its people are also changing quite rapidly. So does a desire to consume food of a much higher quality. And with a population of 1.44 billion people, feeding the world's most populous nation can be very challenging. The per capita consumption of seafood in China has increased from 3.1 kilos in 1985 to 11.4 kilos in 2016. According to a survey published in One Earth, by 2030, China is likely to consume more seafood than they produce domestically. It will need an additional 6 to 18 million tons of seafood to satisfy the increase in projected consumption. The problem is, its local marine fishery resources can't keep up with the growing demand for seafood. This is a food security issue. This is a peace and order issue. This is a national security issue. And why is like China, a country like China, fishing all over the world? Because they have big population. And we also have big population, 100 million. And so many are uh, considered as very poor. The Chinese government has introduced very comprehensive fishing restrictions in its inland water bodies, in the, among which you have the most um, astonishing 10-year fishing moratorium in all the major waterways around the Yangtze River. That affects the livelihood of tens of thousands of fishermen and, the and millions of populations along the Yangtze River. That is just to the sense shows how serious the Chinese government has taken over fishing, uh, has taken effort against uh, address the problem of overfishing. The worsening state of its coastal fishery resources has forced more and more fishermen to enter into disputed waters in the South China Sea. Today, China's fishing fleets remain a ubiquitous presence in the South China Sea to meet the growing demand for seafood and that has also led to another problem, overfishing. Because of the liberalization efforts and, and also the rising demands, but then the overfishing became a huge problem. And very quickly, 
the fish stocks in these uh, traditional fishing grounds has been depleted. Um, I think that uh, occurs in, in somewhere in the early 1990s. But to deal with the rising demand and also the, to ensure proper employment and incomes for the fishermen, the Chinese government has encouraged our expansion of its fishing fleet. That's why you begin to see a large number of Chinese fishing vessels began to operate further and further away from the coast and then into the uh, dist disputed waters in the South China Sea and East China Sea. The Chinese government also provides fuel subsidies for loans for fishermen to build bigger and stronger vessels so they could venture further into the ocean to catch bigger and wider varieties of fish. The presence of these bigger and stronger fishing vessels have also enabled Chinese fishermen to flex their muscle at the expense of other fishermen in the increasingly crowded seas. Angry protesters in the Philippines have put the blame on the Duterte administration for being soft on China. And that has cost the Philippines dearly in terms of its maritime resources. <coughs> Kathy Estabilo, Secretary General of the National Federation of Peasant Women for One, wants the Filipino government to fight back against what she describes as Chinese occupation and the militarization of the West Philippine Sea. The same sentiment is echoed by 18-year-old student Heather Andreas. He's just really becoming a puppet of China in itself. Even if he's denying it, even if he's denying that he is not one, he is, and it is already evident to the youth and to the masses. He even said so himself that during his campaign period that he will jet ski to Spratlys and put a Philippine flag. Where is it now? What did he do? Nothing. Instead of asserting the ruling and using it to unify uh, positions uh, within ASEAN and with the rest of the international community concerning uh, its rights and entitlements in the West Philippine Sea, instead of doing that, it chose to put it in a back burner. It assumed that China would reciprocate with massive infrastructure support and development assistance. Five years down the road, not much has come out of that. And instead, no, or in exchange, China was able to gain much headway into the West Philippine Sea through fishing, uh, marine science exploration, and possibly even exploration of our resources uh, during this time. And the pandemic only um, um, complicated matters because uh, now instead of um, infrastructure support, uh, the administration is now hoping that uh, China will reciprocate through the provision of vaccines. According to a Filipino food security advocacy group, the country has lost 3.6 million kilograms of fish due to the presence of Chinese fishing vessels in the West Philippine Sea. The country stands to lose a further 7.2 million kilograms of fish for each month that the Chinese vessels are allowed to stay in these waters. For now, Filipino fishermen like Bobby Roldan can only watch from a distance as loads of fish are being extracted by the Chinese fishing fleet in Filipino waters. Ang tapang ng China kasi dahil pinapayagan nito ng ating gobyerno dahil sinasabi ni presidente nung nakaraan nung mga tinatanong siya na kaibigan naman daw natin ang China, siya na lang daw ang makikipag-usap. As Chinese, 
Philippines and Vietnamese fishing vessels continue to compete for diminishing fish stocks in the South China Sea. Filipino and Vietnamese fishermen have found themselves outmatched by the better equipped vessels of China's Coast Guard and fishing fleet. Many are worried that their livelihood will be severely undermined the longer the situation continues and want the government to step in to put an end to their misery. Will it ever happen? Will the dispute spiral out of control? It's all quiet in the disputed waters of the South China Sea after China imposed the annual fishing ban in all the areas under its control. All fishing activities near the Scarborough Shoal, the Paracel Islands and the Gulf of Tonkin are now strictly prohibited. The ban takes effect every year from May 1st to August 16, in an attempt to conserve fish stocks which have been declining at an alarming rate. China has warned that it will use all necessary measures, including the use of force, against those who violate the ban. For many fishermen who rely on the sea for a living, the fishing ban has caused great hardship to their livelihood. And they're urging their governments to take firm measures to resist the ban and protect the interests of the fishing community. <laughs> Ang pinagtatakan po namin noon, bakit wala na pong nagro-robbing na ano, yung Philippine Navy noon. Kaya pumasok po sila dyan sa ano, uh, Scarborough. Hindi namin po namin alam kung ano bang ginawa po nila o sinangla po yan o ibininta sa kanila. Kaya po kaming mangingisda. Nagdadala ang isip po kami talaga kung sino ba talaga may ari yung pong, ano, bahura na yan, Scarborough. Dapat lang naman talaga na ipaglaban ang karapatan ng mga mangisda na malayang mga pangisda doon sa ating pangisdaan. Dahil ito ang atin ito eh. At dito tayo nabubuhay. Dito nabubuhay ang mga isda. Nandiyan nakasalalay ang kabuhayan. Buhay ng mga mangisda ang nakasalalay dyan sa sariling atin, tapos tayo yung natataboy, tayo yung ano, anong gusto nilang mangyari sa atin. Hindi na lang tuwira na sinabing mamatay na lang kayo ng gutom, mamatay kayo ng dilat. We have to do a lot to ensure that our, our people are protected from illegal fishing, incursions, poaching happening in our water. So, uh, unahin dapat talaga ang kapakanan ng ating mamamayan. Back in 2016, Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte charmed voters with his hardline stance on China. During his campaign for the presidency, he even promised to ride a jet ski in the South China Sea and challenge the Chinese incursion in Philippine waters. But that changed as soon as he became president. Today, President Duterte has forged a close alliance with China, hoping to reap economic dividends through direct investments, financial assistance and loans from China. And he rarely criticizes Beijing for its expansionism, despite facing intense pressure from the Filipino public for his muted response against China's incursion in the West Philippine Sea. Dr. J. Batombakal from the Institute of Maritime Affairs and Law of the Sea feels that the country is now paying the price for being too soft and too accommodating towards China. If the Philippine president um, exhibits uh, fortitude no, uh, and determination, China will respect that no, uh, and behave accordingly. Uh, they will not disregard him or disrespect him or take actions that um, um, they know um, um, undermine uh, the, the re that uh, relationship. No? If they see that you're weak and you're easy to influence, no, then they will try to get away with everything they can. No? 
But if they see that you're strong and that you're uh, determined no, and, and could potentially cause trouble for, for, for China, then they will um, um, you know, handle you more uh, carefully and respectfully. Uh, that's why when you look, when you compare uh, how China, for example, uh, deals with Indonesia, you know, with Jokowi, you know, despite the fact that they've had differences and even many confrontations around the Natuna Islands, you know, they're not disrespecting uh, Indonesia and they're even prioritizing the relationships with Indonesia. You know? uh, in, in, in the delivery of the vaccines, Indonesia was well ahead of us. You know? Despite all the accommodations that we gave, you no, know, while Indonesia did not uh, even give them any quarter, you know, yet they still needed to prioritize Indonesia. So that is a very good example. You know. Another one is uh, Vietnam. You know. uh, despite Vietnam's smaller size uh, relative to China, you know, China is not pushing them over easily you know, because they know that uh, Vietnam, if necessary, will actually confront them. In fact, China has been very willing or uh, even eager <laughs> to negotiate uh, to talk to um, other Southeast Asian climate states regarding the shared resources. Not uh, many countries are willing to talk about joint development um, uh, without any discussions about sovereignty. Um, that's why the, the proposals for joint development has not really um, moved uh, um, has not really achieved much real progress. What's stopping countries from challenging China's position in the South China Sea is its economic and military might. China today is the world's second largest economy. It also boasts of one of the world's strongest military forces. China has significantly more leverage. You know, China, for, for all intents and purposes, is a major regional power. It's one we have to live with. Uh, it's one just right next to us. It is a major economic power. It has, um, it now is, uh, co compared to Southeast Asia, a major military power. It has the ability to project uh, force to sustain it, to escalate it beyond what Southeast Asians can manage. Uh, and on top of that, yeah, there is this uh, you know, uh, almost all Southeast Asian countries count China as their largest or among the largest trading partners that they have. Overall, it is a very, very beneficial relationship that both sides don't want to put at stake. So um, I would say that, yes, China does hold significant leverage here. It's been five years since the International Tribunal at The Hague rejected China's historical claim to most of the disputed South China Sea. And five years on, China's control over these waters has gotten a lot stronger. Negotiations over the issue of sovereignty in the South China Sea appear to be in a deadlock. Control of the South China Sea lies in the hands of a nation with the economic and military power. In short of an armed conflict, China's territorial gains in the South China Sea appear irreversible. Despite all these accommodations, you know what the loans still never got off the ground quickly. I mean, it still took them years to work out the paperwork. And now uh, Duterte um, doesn't have much to show for uh, all his accommodations. No? maybe a couple of uh, small bridges and several loan documents, but, but no actual uh, finished major infrastructure. Okay. So that's what happens when, when, when the president tries to be uh, too soft and accommodating no? the, and hoping for mere reciprocity. Uh, that is not how uh, China works, uh, unfortunately for him. I think the fundamental challenge uh, faces the South China Sea fishery is that there are simply too many people rely on the limited fish stocks for food and immense source of income, um, which is further complicated by the unresolved territory and maritime disputes. And um, so you, I think as countries continue to push for the outward expansion of their fishing industries, um, we are gonna see uh, perhaps even more competitions or fishery conflicts in the disputing waters. As for the fishermen whose livelihood is closely tied to the sea, 
they can only hope that the government can do more to defend their rights to fish in the traditional fishing ground, no matter how hard or how long it takes before it's too late. Ang ilingin ko lang po yung dapat po kung ano yung sa atin dapat po ipagtanggal po natin at bantayan po para po yan sa mga Pilipino po na yung mga isla na yan hindi naman po para sa ibang bansa yan yan po ang dapat po dapat uh, ipaglaban ng ating presidente po pero kung mananahimik at hindi nalalaban tumatalo na wala na tapos na ang ano no tapos na ang laban no Thì tất nhiên là khuyên là cái khuyên anh em này chứ cuộc sống mưu sinh của mình chứ bám biển để giữ biển đảo quê hương của mình.